Archie Shelley. He was born on the 19th of March in 1891 at 35 Camp Street. Have I some photographs of that? Yeah. This is 35 Camp Street at this end, which is when you go up High Street, you stop at the junction of Camp Street and you look across the road at the first corner house is Highton Street. This is the second one on. Um, and he was one of nine children. His parents were Charles and Mary Ann. He was the seventh child, and he had four sisters and four brothers, and he was at least the third generation of Shelleys to be born and to live in Walkley. Now, you won't believe how hard we've tried to find a Shelley relative We've done local, national and international about, you know, all sorts of replies. But I can't get a photograph of him. I can't get a close um, relative. I had uh, an email from a lady in Australia who said that her father was friend of a Mr. Shelley who lived at Cross Pool. And about three days later, I saw the death in the paper. But... You conducted the service for him, didn't you? And found a relative, but we're still not found a photograph. So. <laughs> Sorry, we can't produce that. He went to Bowling School, and he was admitted to the senior school on the 30th of October, 1898, and he left school on the 18th of March, 1904. He became a file cutter, as were some of his brothers, his father, his uncles, and his grandfather. So there's a long tradition of that sort of thing within the family. In 1871, Archie's father, was Charles, was living at home with his parents, Charles and Elizabeth, on Bellag Road. Archie's father married in 1872, and by the 1881 census, they got four children. George Herbert, Frank, Emma, and Amelia. And they were living at Two House, Two House, Two Court, Sycamore Street. Spent ages looking for Sycamore Street, uh, looking on maps, and eventually <coughs> went into the Kellys and looked through a few. Turned out to be Compton Street. He changed his name <coughs> round about that time to Compton Street. Um, and then by 1891, the family were living at, sorry, by 1901, the middle one, the family were living at 311 Walkley Road, which is when you stand at the top of Compton Street and look at it. It's the last house on Walkley Road before you get the curve going round onto Cam Street. So that's the middle picture there. It's obviously being modernised, but it's still there. Um, and by this time there were another two children and the youngest child, May, was born on the 31st of July 1895. She was baptised at St Mary's but unfortunately she died at 10 months old and was buried in St Mary's Church Cemetery. By 1911 the family were back on Cow Street, just a little bit further around the corner at number 78, uh, 68. And living with them was Dalton Shelley, who was born in 1905, and he was the grandson of Charles and Mary Ann, and nephew to Archie. So he was brought up with the family. Another sister died in 1898, at 17, and again she's buried in St Mary's Cemetery. Um, as you can see, he's lived in three houses, his dad comes from Bellag, he goes to Bowville School and he's all within ever such a small area. So he didn't wander very far. We do know that he was a member here. And his attestation papers, this was, they're not on the internet. Um, and I did a long shot and wrote to the Grenadier Guards and I got four pages back, so I was fortunate that I got that. But they said he was employed as a blacksmith. And it gave his age as 43 years, not 23. So, before he volunteered, he worked at Neepsend Gasworks 
and he was a member of their cricket club. And he volunteered for service on the 4th of September 1914 uh, with at least another two members from the gas board. One was Arthur Steele, who was from Walkley, and the other was Harry Percival Smith. Now, my interest in this is that Archie Steele, Arthur Steele is my uncle, and I didn't know until I researched this that they'd all signed up together. There might have been a larger group, but these three didn't survive, so, and I've got it off the memorial boards. So whether there were others that um, signed up at the same time and survived, I really don't know. Um, he was five foot nine and a half, he was quite tall and weighed 143 pounds, which is 10 stone three. He had a chest measurement of 34 to start with, which on expansion was 36 and a half. And he'd got no distinctive marks or scars. His complexion was dark with brown eyes and black hair. And he was in the remedy of guards. <coughs> He was killed on the 16th of, um, I'll find it in a minute, 16th of May 1915. Um, there's quite a little write up about it. the war down there's lots of so bits of a write up, right up, a narrative after six o'clock in the afternoon. And at some point during that time, Archie was wounded. He was in hospital in Boulogne for four weeks. And then they brought him over to the Royal, sorry, to the London Hospital in Whitechapel. Um, in between this time, it's interesting to know that Archie's elder brother, Frank, enlisted on the 4th of June. 1915, and I think these dates are quite significant because this is just after Archie's been wounded and before he comes to England. So, whether it's a response to Archie being wounded that his brother enlists, and he was living at 79 Freedom Road with his wife and four children. What makes me think it is a reaction is because I think married men with children weren't conscripted until about 1916 17 time. Um, and he was with the 9th Battalion of York's and Lancs in France. And he was discharged in 1917 with neuritis, which he said had been caused by standing in water in the trenches. Um, we didn't find any of his family because they all went to Australia in 1920. So Archie was shot during the Battle of Festubert, I don't know whether I've pronounced that right, I've got a problem with French names, on the 16th of May 1915, and was transferred to a military hospital in Boulogne. And then he was evacuated to London Hospital in Whitechapel, and nursed on Millwood Ward. This is not, oh, this is, sorry, this is the Grenadiers um, they pushed the German line. This, this line at this side, with the little castle bits on, was the German line before the battle, and they pushed it, pushed the, um, the line further back. This is the London Hospital in uh, Chapel. I think it's a fantastic photograph. And this is one of the wards, not the ward that he was missing. Um, and when they examined it, got an entry wound, a bullet wound, approximately three inches above his left ear, and an exit wound at the back of his head. So how on earth it survived for a month is amazing. He had lots of this, this medical stuff here as well. Uh, on the 17th of what, June, he was operated on by Mr. Kidd who found that the left half of the skull, skull behind the entry wound was cracked with pieces varying in size, from splinters to pieces as nearly as big as his thumb. And unfortunately, Archie died of his wounds the next day, and the post-mortem found that he'd got massive infections, which I suppose he'd probably got before he got to London. Um, there was quite a piece in the newspaper.
paper, dated the 25th of June 1915. And um, quite a few in memorials from the family for various years. The one there in 17, two in 17, and one in 1918. Um, from his family. Archie also got um, the war medal, the British war medal and the victory medal, but he also got the 1914-15 star. He's remembered on Sheffield Council as uh, Roll of Honour. He's on St Mary's Roll of Honour, as is my uncle. He's obviously got a stained glass window upstairs. This is the memorial of the gas door um, down at Transco. Uh, they took the gas board over did the Transco and their offices were down Effingham Street. And we've got a little garden, just a little piece in front of there. It's quite nice actually. This is the memorial inside the gas board building, which is the one on Commercial Street that used to be the Eat What You Can Buffet Chinese place. Um, and that's, uh, that's where that one is. Have I finished? No? And it's got a very stone in the Sevens Church Cemetery. Thank you.